Hello, lovely humans. Welcome to STEM Bites, where we tackle your seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and mathematics to learn more about this big, beautiful universe. In this episode, we have yet another question from da, 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 Physics Penguin. Yeah. Okay, so makes sense. Uh, we're tackling some really interesting questions in physics, and Physics Penguin and the questions from the audience are rolling in off of that. So let's just keep on the physics wave. All right. Or maybe it's the physics particle, or maybe it's both. <laughs> okay. Crack myself up. So physics penguin, would you like to share your question with the group? Yes, please. <laughs> in talking about the standard model and gravity, where does dark energy and dark matter fit in? Great question, physics penguin. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so dark matter, that is my jam. For folks that don't know, I worked in a dark matter lab and it was really cool. This was back uh, when I was studying physics, which I don't do anymore, but I still really love it. And so I get really excited when people want to talk about dark matter. Um, it's been a hot minute. Uh, so some things have changed. Um, I'm not an expert, but I will give you my, my two cents and, and share some stories. Okay, so dark matter, dark energy, is that gravity? Well, no. Kind of. Maybe. So the short answer is like, we're still kind of figuring it out. But what is it? So dark matter and dark energy actually compose most of the mass energy of this universe. So quick Shout out to Einstein, who was like, E equals MC squared. And what that means is that energy, or E, equals mass, the amount of mass of a particle, for example, times the speed of light. So this is just a constant um, a scaling vector, basically. Um, but basically what this tells us is that mass, the amount of mass that a particle has, is a form of energy. That's pretty phenomenal, and at the time, revolutionary. So we know that uh, mass and energy are different forms of the same thing. So when I say mass energy of the universe, it's basically a precise way of saying of all of the energy in the universe, some of which is mass, some of which is pure energy or different types of energy. And most of that, like 95% of that, is a calm is either dark matter or dark energy the things that we can see feel hear and touch interact with that's less than five percent of the total mass energy of the universe mind-boggling and also really 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 cool so dark matter is around 20 to 25 percent of that 95 percent most of the mass uh, mass energy of the universe Dark energy is the remaining about 70%-ish. Um, and then, yeah, okay. So dark matter, what is that? Dark matter is theorized to be a particle, although that might be changing, we'll see. So it was discovered originally in 1922. There was an astronomer who was like, hey, galaxies are spinning way faster than they should. And in the 70s, 1970s, Vera Rubin verified the fact that the rotational velocity or rotational speed of galaxies was way faster than the observed amount of mass or matter in those galaxies. So basically, because gravity is a force uh, between masses, if we look at the amount of mass in a galaxy, we should be able to calculate how fast it's spinning. But they're spinning 400 times faster than they should be. Bah! And this isn't just one galaxy. This is like all of the galaxies that we can see. And so Vera Rubin, smart lady, she was like, that's real weird. Cut to a few years later, because people were like, nah, lady, you just made a mistake. No, she didn't. She was smart. Um, people just didn't want to listen to her because reasons. Um, we're not getting into that now. Anyway, so because of that huge discrepancy, it, and because we can't see it, 
it was dubbed dark matter. Ooh, spooky physicists crack me up. So the lab that I worked in, we were working on detecting a specific type of theoretical particle called a WIMP. Physicists and their acronyms cracks me up. So <laughs> a WIMP, W I M P. So silly. And it stands for weakly interacting massive particle. Weak in the sense that it doesn't really interact with a lot of other forces. So these particles, they interact with gravity, but not with light, hence why we can't see them with our eyes or a lot of other scientific instruments. Um, and it also stands for the fact that this proposed particle was able to interact with the weak nuclear force. So that means that it could collide with the nucleus of another atom, okay? So like billiard balls, or like if you kick a soccer ball and it hits another soccer ball or something like that. Interacting, it interacts with the weak nuclear force, weakly interacting. Massive, meaning it's real, real, real heavy. Even if you put it on the moon, it's still very heavy. And then particle, that it's actually a particle that would fit within the standard model. So, this can this particle candidate has actually been ruled out which is pretty wild there were two leading candidates when i was in school one of them was wimps the other one was axions which solved another problem in physics both of those have been ruled out as potential particle candidates for dark matter so where does that leave us i spoke with the professor that i worked with a couple of years ago and he was kind of like well that's cool that I contributed to scientific research, but like now what? So some folks are looking at exploring it, uh, sorry, creating it in particle accelerators. Um, and other folks are looking at a geometric uh, accommodation of dark matter. Um, so kind of looking at it in different ways, but it's a huge mystery right now. And that is nothing to say of dark energy. We haven't even touched that. So dark energy is responsible for the expansion of the universe, not just the expansion, but the fact that the universe is expanding faster and faster and faster, which means it's the expansion is accelerating. So speed is constant. Acceleration increases in speed. And that's dark energy. And we really don't know a lot about dark energy. That's kind of about it. The fact that it's 70% of the total mass energy of the universe and the fact that it's causing the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. There's probably a lot of smart people that know a little bit more than I do, but that's pretty much the general kind of like facts that we know about dark energy. So where does that leave us with the standard model and gravity? Circling back, well, meh, they're kind of mysteries out here that are related they could potentially help us to understand, better understand why the standard model and general relativity don't fit well. They're not, they don't play nice on the playground, um, but they are discoveries that are kind of outside of that kind of that problem in physics. Um, maybe like subsets. And personally, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that our theories are, we are building them up as we go, right? They're incomplete theories. We're figuring things out as we get more knowledge. We're building on the backs of the folks that came before us. And that's really, really beautiful. And a lot of times I think that the questions are sometimes more interesting than the answers, except sometimes when you get to quantum, you're like, that's mind boggling. The answers are pretty wild. So. I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you everybody to all of the great questions. And remember, there are three other letters that we can learn about. I do have a lot of math videos. So if you have questions about math, there's lots of things to peruse through. But please send me your questions on science, tech, engineering, and math. And we will start to learn some of these really, really cool things to give you hope and inspire you and just like remind you that the world is weird and wonderful. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.